I don't understand why I'm always so late in life. Just in general, endlessly behind. Ha 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 ha. Good evening. I'm your lead anchor, A. Scott McGee. And I'm your co anchor, Jonna Stewart, filling in for Gordon. Hmm, really? We might actually get something done tonight. <laughs> Maybe. And for tonight's top stories, crime reports show that Medford is the most dangerous city in Oregon. I know I never want to go there. Damn Dreadford. Methford. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. hmm. Also, researchers have developed condoms that change a specific color when in contact with STDs. Oh, great. That'll save me a lot of time and energy. Me too. The dream of the Ah, oh, yes, Portland is now the whitest city in America. <laughs> With diversity falling. Fred Armisen, I guess you just don't count as color. And for our final story, man tracks stolen phone around the world and inadvertently becomes a celebrity on Chinese social media. I was once an inadvertent celebrity. Yeah. Get better. <laughs> this one's not much better. Oregon's 29th largest city and the second most populous city that starts with an A, it is pretty damn white at 90.3%. Ranked the 69th in crime. Wow, that's almost significant. Mm -hmm. Flash forward, NASA creates warp bubbles with the new EM drive. Help warp one, engage! Oh, I'm being told they are now changing their story. Damn it, NASA. There's nobody better at lifting your expectations only to dash them to pieces. Nearly insanity. <laughs> I learned to steer with my knees when I was a trucker. Nå straks starter Newtons pubertetsserie. Det er normalt for enkelte foreldre å bli flaue. Dere er herve advart. Sex ed, compare and contrast. Oh, that's a I good like one. I like that one. Nå har jeg ikke denne tomaten her tunge. Men omtrent sånn her. Hey coach, didn't you say it was glands that made guys different? Yeah, that's right. What's that? Well, that'd take a little explaining. Maybe later, huh? Yeah, but when? What is Emma? Suger no heart no balls and spring. Let's see, where was I? Oh yeah. Puberty's a lot of things. Mainly though, it's a time of change. For you, it means your bodies are changing from boys to men. Say, when's the guy start shaving anyway? Oh, there isn't any special age. But everybody doesn't develop at the same time, or in the same way. Maybe a diagram will help. And guys, they get also a test. Utsende ditt, forandres. Okay, here we go. Pants off one leg. Oh, yeah. Making real progress now. Heading towards pervert zone. Yeah. They do it for real in Norway. They do do it for real in Norway. Yeah. <laughs> That's why they, when they raise their glasses, they say, score. That's Norwegian. Is that a thing? It's a thing. That's real? Mm -hmm. That's true? Do you know Norwegian? Did you Norwegian? just make that up? I, no, don't, I don't know it's any. It's real. 
I did read today that Ashland is almost 14% Norwegian, though. I do believe that, because it's so white. Mm-hmm. Nice place. Hey, cheers, Viking. Hey, good dancing. Hey, who is this bird guy? Video games? Bobble! Nice pie. What's this place? She's cute. Good party. Welcome back, everybody. Wasn't that a pleasant message from our sponsor? And welcome back, Gordon, who happens to be hidden behind the desk and doesn't appreciate that his special spot was taken by some hussy. <laughs> welcome back, Gordon. And maybe it's time for you to go back to doing whatever you were doing before I got here, like silencing the voice of Gordon, or maybe taking up valuable oxygen from the area of the desk where I normally broadcast. I'm glad to be back. I had such hopes for this evening. <laughs> Anthrax's stolen phone around the world, makes a friend, becomes a celebrity on, uh, uh, you know what, just skip it, it's not that interesting. It's a pretty funny story though, there's oranges and he has a restaurant, it's great. If you have the time, look it up, otherwise, don't look it up, doesn't yeah, matter. I might as well put that link down there. If you click on the link below, read, the link. read it yourself. Yeah, it's your own damn fault. Portland, why does city in the... Portland determined to be the whitest big city in America. No surprise there. Not really. Oregon didn't even allow black people to come in until like in the middle of the 60s, which is a part of our shameful past that you should all become aware of. Click this other link, which may or may not show up underneath my fingers, to find out the previous shame of the last generation. Otherwise, forget it. That's one more thing you don't know. Portland, super white, getting whiter. Only getting whiter. Hipsters, get some black friends. Imported? I don't know. <laughs> hey, Oakland. Oregon's a great place to settle. Come help these guys out. <laughs> P.S. The black people in Ashland have all been tagged, and we know where they are at all times. Most of them are actors. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> whoa. He's right. We don't always know where they are. Sometimes they get off radar. <laughs> Sun Sports! Welcome to Jimmy the Two Hardman, the hottest goddamn man in sports. I've been pulled in to broadcast my brand of sports here in Sun because their last sportscaster was a dang blank sexual deviant who couldn't sport a way out of a sand volleyball bikini. <laughs> Before I came here to Sun, I enjoyed an 18 month stint of blasting the truth to Telemundo, the Spanish channel. <laughs> Couldn't understand a damn word those boys were saying, but goddammit, they sure did love their fucking sports in Telemundo! Anyway, today we're here so I can try out a few cool casts to see if anyone has a mustard! to keep up with old Jimmy when it comes to old time who comes around so bear with me as if we threw the nappy pampies and look for the Pam that can handle the man that is Jimmy Harvey! So on with the big show! <laughs> what makes you think you're mad enough to go toe to toe with me, Pam? First of all, my name's not Pam. Pam! Jimmy. What makes you the hard man of sports? I'm the hottest man in sports, the hottest goddamn man in sports. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Yeah, you're trying to tell me. Tell America. Tell him. Why are you the hardest man in sports? I want to know. They want to know. I'm Can we get the that? Yeah. You're trying to call me out. What are you? What are you? Some broad telecast? The softest woman in television. Stop. Did you well, yeah, I was thinking you're the hardest man I could be the softest hottest? woman, you know? It's you like can't a... use the word softest in front of the world's hottest. I'm the hottest goddamn man in sports. Can I, I be... I'm trying to tell you that. Semi-soft, then? You soft, can't then? use the word softest. Softest is just uh, not in my vernacular. It completely goes against everything all right, that Jimmy. I even know to be true in reality. Hey, let's not stroke out, out, Jimmy. You can't go soft when you want to go hard. I just want to go hard all the time, and you have to go hard. I'm the hottest. Lo siento. 
mis amigos, lo siento. Now, six things. Uh, uh, here we are in this part of the broadcast. We're going to be doing the rest of the broadcast incredibly fast because we have to uh, wrap this up in about 15 minutes. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go into six things that you uh, normally would change your life. Or have no effect on your life whatsoever. Perfect. Cassette tapes, make it a comeback. Good thing you finally threw away your cassette player. Developers have come up with a method to encode several orders of magnitude more information on the previously established media. They can now put over 2,000 Blu-rays worth of information on a freaking cassette tape. Wow. Does anyone even remember cassette tapes? I remember the cassette tape very clearly because just today I put a cassette tape in my car. In fact, it was the uh, Los Lobos uh, album from 1992. They really knew how to rock back then. Cassette tape's still making a comeback in Gordon Mackey's car. Hairy stockings that have been designed to make your legs look like the legs of some sort of uh, abominable snowman. That's very useful if you want to have a date or if you'd like to get laid by women that are much more hairy than you would ever want to anticipate. The kind of hairy stockings that I like to wear are the sorts that give me that masculine prowess. The hairy stockings that remind me that a real man from where I come from can survive a couple of nights in the ice and snow. Hairy stockings. Toast. Toast glass. Mm. Could... Oh man, just a hmm that threw you off, huh? Toast glass. Have you not been able to uh, witness the entire uh, process of your toast being toasted? That might be something that really burns you. Burns you, get it? Toast glass. <laughs> Nipple cards. I don't know if you've been trending with such diligent care what I've been trending, which is a veritable revolution as women everywhere realize that they too want to bear their nipples. But the stodgy internet continues to hide the delicious nipples of the female sex. Now, in uh, rampant overturning of such things, the Nipple cards have been developed so that women everywhere can take men's nipples and paste them over their own nipples. Some people have digital skill and can do this on their own. But for those of you that can't afford such luxuries, purchase pre-made nipple cards. Nipple cards. Give the man the bird the old-fashioned way. With a bunch of men's nipples taped over your own nipples. On to hover bikes. Hover bikes. The uh, army is now investing in what they believe to be the ultimate all-terrain single-person carrying vehicle. It's basically a quadcopter with, uh, I don't know, motorcycle-like mounts wow. so you can uh, ride the thing. Is this like a major improvement over the hoverboard that we did in episode three? You mean the pretend hoverboard that wasn't actually a hoverboard at all? Uh, just because it needed a conductive space to ride on. I don't think it's a pretend. Also, they come up with a real version of a hoverboard. Again, it's basically a quadcopter that you stand on. Wow, they accomplished that in 2015 too, huh? It turns out everything, the hover that we ever wanted, you, you, just, you just use a quadcopter. Amazing. In just one year, they invented a hoverboard and then blew it up, told it to get its shit together and made a better one. 2015, you've really been blowing us out of the water with the inventions. I'm still reeling from such inventions as the uh, force field and also, strangely, the one about the bees. Also, uh, one of the car companies, I'm blanking on the name right now, What's came up with a real hoverboard design that puts that other one to shame again. Wow, the third one or the second one? Man, I can't keep track anymore. Too many damn hoverboards. Too many hoverboards. They're everywhere. <laughs> Once Wait, there man. was none, and now there are two. I got excited about one, and now I'm just offended by all the hoverboards flooding the market. Or quadcopters, or whatever the hell else is going on. Speaking of that, if you want to talk about breakthroughs, let's talk about hydrophobic paint. Now, this was designed in Germany, or was it Russia, or one of the other freezing countries at the top of the European map. I don't even know if Germany's still... Yeah, Germany's definitely still a country. What was I thinking? USSR. Sorry about that. Gone for a long time. Still haven't been forgotten. Anyway, the moral of the story is hydrophobic paints, which were designed in order to stop human bums from peeing on walls. 
Now what happens is when you whip out your Johnny or your Tallywhacker or whatever you want to call it and spray your urine all over the place, the wall actually sprays back, providing your shoes with a friendly dousing to remind you to pee somewhere else. Oh yeah. Thanks to Weatherman family. family. What? I'll just uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna start this one. Oh, I think you should. Yeah. And now to Gordon Mackey, who's gonna tell us a little bit about that that wedding that he officiated. That was the wedding that kept me from the desk and allowed some floozy to replace me temporarily. Here's what went down this afternoon: is that I had the unique pleasure of being the officiant, officiant, officiator, that which officiates at a wedding out on a dock somewhere in the middle of the woods. And that was the wedding of Jay Snow's older brother, Chris. Now what we're about to see today is a real wedding, and I wanna say that one more time. This actually happened. As I went streaking through the woods with our wonderful producer who always refuses to show up on camera, we witnessed humanity at its finest and most interesting. And here is a brief summary of the clips that you're about to see. This is love, organ style. Okay, here we are. We made it out to the old Lake of the Woods after taking a long way. We we're 50 minutes uh, on night schedule. We are done to practice. I'm gonna go find out the bride's actual legal name and uh, the Snow family is up there getting ready to, to rampage here. Good luck. It's going down tonight. Yeah. We're getting oh here today God. on this beautiful day. Gorgeous sunny Oregon today. Come on over next to the We're going this battery, way because of this guy said. Oh yeah. Thanks to Weather Man. Okay. Well, there's no uh, maid of honor or, uh, well, almost anything else. It's just the bride and the groom and us, so it's going to be nice and simple. All right, y'all, finish your cigarettes and stuff. The bride's coming down. <laughs> Promise not to leave the toilet seat up. <laughs> so that you fall in in the middle of the night. Because that's just rude. And to not do anything overtly stupid. I don't know if you said not. I think you should have said not to do anything overtly stupid. And if you forget to put the toilet seat down. I won't make a big deal about it. I, don't believe it. Oh. <laughs> I promise to love you for your strengths and weaknesses and to care for you all the rest of the days of your life. That's good. You jumped the gun on that one, but I like where you're going with it. <laughs> all right. Please put the ring on his finger. Ring boy bucks catch flea. Nice. Nice. <laughs> he does. Good. Say that again. We didn't hear you. Yeah, I didn't get that. Oh, I do. Okay. Yeah. You need assurances here, damn it. <laughs> you need a shout out. Come on. Right. He does. It's on record now. <laughs> I do. There we go. It's <laughs> a good sign. <laughs> Husband and wife. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for the participants for being exactly who you are. Every moment with you on film was awesome. I wish I could have stayed and had a smoke and a Bud Light with you, but I had to return to the studio. I did stay and have a smoke and a Bud Light. That's why I was late. I'm feeling great. <laughs> Sun Sports. That what makes you think that you're mad enough to go toesies with Jimmy the Toolman Hardman? Well, I probably have more college credits than you do. 
College knowledge, who gives a shit? Well, the Board of Education just, just can't be given all this funding over to the athletes anymore. Oh, right? God, just... but you're making nice little soldiers out of them. What are you? Give everybody a trophy, treat everybody equally, no competition, no sports, no, no growing of the human spirit. I think growing either inwardly from giving everybody a fair chance to learn like the proper academic. What the hell are you talking about? I'm... What are you talking about? You're talking about institutionalizing, making people pussies. That's what you're talking about. Treating them all fair and bad, all nice and mimbly like, oh, don't punish them, don't punish them. You know? Now, bring back spanking. That's what you need to bring back. Beat the shit out of your children. That's what you need to bring back. There's, there's, Teach no, them lessons. there's no cause to, to get uh, flustered about this. What, what's really going on is there's not enough funding for education anymore. It just goes straight to the athletes because they make the schools more money and that's that's what's really going what on. What can you learn in the classroom that you can't learn on a field, huh? Well, what if you're disabled? Can you be on the field the if you're disabled? Special Olympics, that's what that's for. Sounds like progress to me. Uh, absolutely, sports are the only thing that will weed out those weaker chains in humanity. The evolutionary spirit has to coincide, it has to grow, it has to evolve. Through competition and through sports is the only way that you're gonna end up weeding out those weaker chains. And thus making the chain stronger. You make the chain of humanity stronger by weeding out those weak, those weak, puny little pieces of shit that continue, continue to pollute the evolutionary human gene pool. Do you not understand? I suppose we should ask um, the Einsteins of the world to take up sports. Absolutely, absolutely. Einstein was a big fan of cricket, a game that is not only competitive and challenging, but also makes you think. <laughs> the interview's over. <laughs> you suck! <laughs> and what makes you... Think that you're a pam enough to go toe to toe with Jeremy the Duel? I don't know. I, I like sports. And um, you seem nice enough. <laughs> well, well, what did you just say? I said you seem very nice. <laughs> I'm so glad. I'm so glad. <laughs> the Southern Oregon News Network's unusual fifth broadcast. Sixth. Whatever. <laughs> We're excited to welcome the new members to our team today. We got the sports thing figured out there. That was great. Uh, the feller seems a little twitchy, but we think that he's going to be educational. Tonight we are pleased to welcome two of the most popular uh, musicians in Ashland. The Feck and Tinkers have made a name for themselves and history down at Oberon's Tavern by hosting a very popular and growing event called Tinker Tuesday. Now the secret to their success, as far as I understand it, is the revolutionary idea that everybody likes to sing together. They lead people in an astounding amount of old Irish gypsy tunes and newfangled shenanigans involving sheep. I thought it was called Topless Tuesday. Uh, actually, that's illegal. Edit is now called Toptional Tuesday. <laughs> Toptional Tuesday. Oberon's Tavern. <laughs> <laughs> So this one is an old, old Irish drinking song that I wrote about six years ago. It's called The Saint of Ishkivaha. 
Oh, I was born in whiskey still on a solstice night, so bitter and chill with a peat fire burning under me grill and me mother drunk beside me. She brought me tender to her breast with a lullaby, so as I might rest, but I shot refused me mother's breast and took her whiskey bottle. Till I riddle, I diddle, I dee, I can't drink no water nor tea, no cider stout nor lager for me, and the saint of fish gave So what a love life keeps me sharp as a fishing knife It got me a red-haired bonny wife And keeps me strong in fighting I travel far and travel wide All over Eric's fair countryside In foreign pubs I did a bite But found no drink was finer Too la ri la di la di I can't drink no water nor tea No cider stout no luck for me And the sake of fish gave a And two and on me bed, me wife can the fire by me head with a bottle on me finest. I am led to challenge heaven's poaching. To la di la di la di, I can't drink no water nor tea, no cider stout nor lager for me. I'm a saint of Ishkeba. To la di la di la di, I can't drink no water nor tea, no cider stout nor lager for me. I'm the saint of Ishkeba. Thank you very much. Okay, from all of us here tonight, we would like to thank you for tuning into the broadcast. While I finish my sign up, I'm going to eat his beef jerky. Beef jerky that I'm not going to be sharing with the cast or crew. The meat actually went to the strongest predators, and as I'm wearing the nicest sports jacket out of the crew, I get the meat. You guys must feed us on cherries and carrot sticks and whatever else we throw at you. <laughs> Southern Oregon News Network, thanks for playing. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Take care of yourselves. Uh-huh. <laughs>